Hey guys, it's Steve Strangio hanging out here at the Long Island International Film Expo. I'm talking to the filmmakers, and now I'm actually talking to a director of photography. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Tell us your name and your project. My name is Martin R. McGowan, and I'm here for Pressed. Now let's talk about Pressed. Tell us yeah. more about that and uh, your role in it. Well, uh, I met one of the directors. It's a co-direction between uh, Scott Knowlton and Michelle Harding. Mm. Um, I know Michelle for a very long time. We've been looking for a project to work on together, and this finally aligned, so we yeah. were able to do it. Um, and I got to meet Scott, which was awesome. Nice. And uh, yeah, we worked for two nights, uh, worked with a lot of extras, which is brand new for me. Usually my films are really two people in a room talking, nice. not a not, uh, big crowd. Yeah, I got you. And uh, yeah, it was my first work as a DP from not myself, which was really exciting. It was someone else worrying about the direction, worrying about the actors, worrying about all that, and I just got to make it look pretty, which right. was just phenomenal. Let's go more deep into that. So I think a lot of people have heard the term DP or director of photography. Yeah. Um, give us like, you know, the textbook definition as you know it, mm -hmm. and then let's talk about how you uh, applied your skills to Prest. Well, director of photography's job is simplest way is just light. You just light stuff. Light stuff. Um, yeah. Cinematography, I think, has a Greek Something to do with painting with light. I don't know it exactly. That's okay. Uh, People can Google that. So yeah, they'll find that's out. It's not up to us to tell them what that uh, is. Google it and get back to us, all right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we work with light, and as long as that part is done, that's that's really my my uh, area of expertise for this particular film. Gotcha. Um, and yeah, DP works with the director or the directors. Uh, they they have framed the story. They might have shot lists. They might have a, hu a hundred different things. But my job is to make it happen in front of the camera, however that works. So the director um, basically has the idea. They're working with the actors. But now you have to take this director's vision. Yeah. And you have to make it look visually interesting on right. film correctly. And some director, I mean, as a director, I'm very specific because I know what I want. Right. Um, for Scott, it was his first film. Mm. So in a lot of ways, it was kind of like, you know, we have the shot list, but this is what we're trying to do. What do you think? Right. And as long as we get that intention across, that's what's important. And I think that went, that was really exciting because we had specific shots we needed, but a lot of it was, you know, we had a shot list, we threw out some of it, and we were able to kind of just say, like, this shot will do this, this, and this in one shot, which right. would be awesome. There's a, there's a shot in the movie where someone runs across a police line and is pulled back, and we did that in two shots when I think it was originally something like five right. setups, so it, and it helps with time. You know, less shots, quicker. Well, let's talk about that because usually when you set something up, a lot of people say, a lot of people who are like new to movies uh, don't understand that the film is not usually shot yeah. in order. Yeah, no. You know, because it's all, why do you feel, and I know it's like based on location or availabilities, yeah. you know, why do you, can you explain to people why you have to shoot all these things out of order? Yeah. Well, I mean, in, in press specifically, we had, um, the premise is there's been a double homicide yeah. and there's a crowd around this, the, the police line. Uh, we have, uh, you know, 20, 30 extras. Mm. We have two nights to film. Yeah. If we have 20, 30 people standing around yeah. for audio and all that stuff when half the movie takes place on these two people right. who are not in the crowd. Right. That's a lot of wasted time. That's right. a lot of people hanging out for no reason. It's cold. It's raining. If they don't need to be there, let's not have them there. Right. Uh, so one of the nights was focused on the, the crowd, getting interesting shots there. Uh, opening shot of the movie was one of the crowd shots. And then the rest of it was... Rest of that night and the and the following night, we were focused on the characters, gotcha. main characters of the short. Okay, yeah. all right. And you want to make them look as visually interesting as possible. Like, right. do you have a specific style or any uh, influences that that <laughs> helped you? I mean, yeah, I'm. Um, I got insulted once in the most creative way I've ever heard. <laughs> okay, uh, I want to hear this. <laughs> someone said uh, another student of Gordon Willis. Okay. Ruining images with dark pictures or something like that. Uh, Gordon yeah. Willis did The Godfather. Okay. I've never been insulted by being compared to The Godfather. That was insane. Uh, yeah, that's sort of a backhanded compliment. but Very a strange. Yeah. I've, I've never heard anyone disrespect The Godfather. I know. <laughs> like, and you shouldn't. Uh, not in Long Island. No. no. <laughs> uh, but besides that, I mean, I'm... Without my glasses, I have terrible vision, mm. and lights flare in my eyes, and, and I mostly, I didn't know I had bad vision until I was 16. Gotcha. So I spent most of my life seeing shapes and, and whatever, backlit stuff. I live in Florida. Right. Very bright all the time, so people are in silhouette. <laughs> right, right, right. I didn't realize everyone else didn't see this way, so a lot of my movies, including Pressed, are backlit and there's a lot of flaring that's interesting are, because yeah. life has actually influenced your art because that's how it you, like that. that's how you perceived it right but now that you have the glasses i look around i'm like oh okay everyone yeah. else can see when, <laughs> when you drive at night it's not a nightmare okay All right. it's just me but yeah it's, it's also an interesting thing a lot of dps have glasses 
we have busted eyes mm, and our go. whole job is, is doing that but yeah yeah that's why that's where my influences are I think. so I see we're having a, a DP Expo here yeah. how has that been for you um, I'm a I'm an introvert despite this yeah, yeah. Uh, so I liked kind of hanging out in my corner I like watching right. a lot I like listening to other people talk about their stuff because one of the, this is my first film festival ever. Nice. Oh, so welcome. one of the things is you know I've I can talk for an hour and a half about my camera sure uh, don't ask me to small talk. I hear you. So I'm I'm used to kind of like standing in the back, listening to other people, be comfortable, you know, staying to myself. But I had a couple people come over and they asked me questions about my camera. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. Asked me questions about my movie, the Ava, which I'm showing here as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was really exciting to get like kind of a different. Uh, Different, different social situation that I'm used to. Well, Usually, I'm more quiet. Well, we're setting the table, and uh, many people are introverted in the sense that they go to a right. place and they don't feel comfortable. Yeah. I mean, I'm like that too sometimes. You know, if I don't know anybody in a place, I'll sit and I'll watch. Yeah. You know, like, and they're right. my, they're my movie. You know, I'm watching it through <laughs> through my lens. I wear contact lenses, so I understand. Oh. Without these things, I'm. I'll, I'll uh, upgrade at some point. Yeah, you have to give it a shot. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. it's like everything looks underwater. So it's like you know, I'm on the, I'm on the set of Aquaman every time I take my contacts oh, off. Jesus. Uh, but it's great that you get a chance to show your work, yeah. uh, possibly get some gigs off of this. Yeah, that's you know, hope. so yeah. that's that's amazing. Yeah. yeah so, uh, all right. So um, once again, t yeah. tell us your name and, and uh, you, you mentioned Ava. Yes. So briefly Ava, about that. Yeah. Ava is my feature film. I'm okay. a writer director as well as my other stuff. Nice. Uh, Ava was the first feature I ever tried to do. It was July 21 when we shot it. I finished it two weeks ago. Nice. Uh, we had a reshoot three weeks ago wow. and a screening last week. So it was, uh, it's been a hell of a month. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a drama, character drama about a 17 year old girl dealing with uh, extremely dramatic, horrible thing that happens to her mm. over the course of a year. Yeah. Um, it's, my previous two short films were really long. They were 30 minutes and 48 minutes. They were all very plot driven, mystery stories. Uh, you know, second one's about a murder mystery. Very, you know where you're going. Right. Ava was different because it was the, it's just about experiencing this character's life for a year. Nice. Without, you know, there's no MacGuffin at the end. There's no Indiana Jones type uh, thing Ex that they find. Explain MacGuffin to the people. The Alfred Hitchcock quote? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the quote from Alfred Hitchcock is, uh, a MacGuffin is an apparatus for hunting lions in the Scottish Highlands <laughs> because he's hilarious. The actual thing <laughs> is, a MacGuffin is the thing that makes things work. So for Indiana Jones, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. The MacGuffin is the Lost Ark. There you go. Uh, Temple of Doom is the Temple of Doom. It's, yeah, it's yeah. in the title. Gotcha, gotcha, uh, gotcha. Movies have MacGuffins all over the place. Gotcha. Yeah, but Alfred Hitchcock's being irreverent was the inventor of that uh, kind of idea. That, that's his thing. All right, so yeah. we're talking about Ava, and then yeah. uh, your name once again, and then the project you're talking about. Uh, Martin R. McGowan. Uh, I am a DP, director, etc., and I was talking about Prest and Ava. All right. Yeah. Uh, and I'm Steve Strangio, sometimes called the MacGuffin, right here at the Long Island International <laughs> Film Expo. See you soon.